and welcome to my channel where we discuss the Power Platform. In today's episode, we'll be looking at how to use Power Apps to either take a picture with the camera on your device, so that's either using your rear or your um, front camera, depending on the device that you have, as well as actually using the same Power App to upload a picture from your device, so one that's already been taken. Um, and we'll be saving these pictures to a SharePoint file library. So this may be a use case that you've come across and you've wanted to actually get the Power App to do both options. So we'll look how to do that and for that we'll be using Power Automate to bring it all together and get our Power App to work in the right way. So I want to show you the end solution before we go into actually thinking about how to build it, um, just to bring it to life. A bit more so you can see me right here in the click to take a picture so this is your use case so you have your user who can take a picture if they want to um, and they can see the picture below and um, they've got an ID that's auto generated so that's because I've basically looked in the picture library and ordered them and then picked up the max but there are various ways in which you could do that so that's not the important bit here for this video and uh, we'll say type of picture and we'll call it demo picture with camera like so and then we can save that and that will go ahead and fire off a flow and it does take a few seconds for the picture to actually appear in this gallery but it will appear um, secondly what we could do is just use this tap to add a picture um, so I'm just going to pick one of these at random that's the Power BI logo which I have chosen there and this will now be 11 and we'll call this Power BI Logo by Upload, like so. And you can see I've actually done it uh, before as well, a little bit earlier today. So we'll go ahead and save that. And you can see as that's happened, the first picture has appeared. So there is a lag. Um, there is a few minutes between the refresh, so that's something to watch out for when building this solution out. So let's see where these pictures have actually arrived. So this has arrived in a document library. Um, and here I've created some extra columns in this document library. Um, I'm not going to go through exactly how to create a document library in this video. But essentially you have a document library created um, the title is something that is created by default um, it's not actually viewable in this view um, so here you've got the name of all the pictures so this is the first one that we took and this is the second one which is the logo we have the modified um, how many minutes ago so 10 and 9 respectively we have who did it uh, the image ID the picture type so we called that demo picture with camera uh, Power BI logo uh, by upload, the name text. So this name text is actually identical to the name here and there's a reason for that. Uh, so in a subsequent video I'll be showing how to share this and in a Power BI report and that's what this is for. Um, so if I wanted to I could add a column and put in various other fields um, but I'm not going to be going through that in detail in this video. So we'll start by just bringing in that data source into here. So to do that, we go into data sources like so, and it's a SharePoint connector here. So we add a connection, we connect directly, and then here we would be typing in the URL for our SharePoint site. Um, but I've already built the connection here, so I've got it here, which is called JN Power App document library. Now I just want to build a collection so I can store this information in memory. So I'm going to build clear collect, I'm going to call it temp and I'm going to bring in the document library like this. I'm going to insert a gallery to hold this information in. We'll just do a blank vertical and I'm going to tie that to temp and within here I want to put a image in 
and we'll see what we have here. So I can do this item dot thumbnail dot medium and that'll bring in the image. I can then bring in the name text because that could be useful when I'm doing my testing and I'll also bring in another label we'll just call it picture type okay so my gallery has been built I don't need that much space between everything just going to put that on the right hand side put a border around it just to make it neat and we'll give it a title just like there was in the first demo that was shown gallery okay so I'm not going to do the formatting there but there you are we have our gallery on our screen Let's start putting some of the controls that we need on our canvas. So we do need a camera. So as I'm actually recording, you can't see the image in the camera at the moment. But that's fine. Um, we also need an add picture control. So we'll put that just about here. We also don't need an image because that image is actually where we're going to store image once it's been taken. We need a text input because that's where we're going to store our names and I'm just going to label all of these very quickly. So this is your take picture, this is your upload picture, This particular one can be the ID. We can call this the picture type. And we have the ability to see picture here. And we'll put in a save icon as well to click once we are done. So we're going to look at some of the formulas on this screen that we need before we head over to Power Automate. So this ID to start with, I want it to be the max um, ID that's found in our temp table which we just created and add one and that will mean that at all times we're going to ensure that these three sets by setting the reset to true, which will mean that as we add more pictures into our picture library, we can keep an up-to-date ID. That's just one way of doing it, but it's not um, a key thing in this video. Um, and then on here, on the onSelect property, I'm actually going to use uh, this formula here. So if we just talk through it, the first thing is we want this, this captured image variable to be camera1.photo. So the photo which is in this camera. We want that to be stored whenever it's clicked. We want to set a um, text for this image, which will be the logged in user, um, the time, and also the letters JPEG. And that's just a unique identifier which I'll be using um, just as a, a way of actually naming the picture. I also have this global variable called take picture, which is true, which is then going to be used in the save to decide what to do in the Power Automate and which actions and which conversions to actually take for this take photo. In this box um, on my on select property, I want to do something similar, but I don't want to store the picture in here, um, which I'll explain once we get to that step. Um, but I do want us to store the set image and actually take photo for this one is false because that's not the variable we want. And now we are ready to head over to Power Automate.
So over here in Power Automate, we're going to create a new flow from template. So we'll select this Power Apps button template and we'll call this picture ooh, with varying degrees of caps, picture camera uh, demo test. So we'll remember that. Uh, we'll create a new step and we'll go for create file. So we want to create a file within SharePoint, which is this action here. Um, we've got a site address, which is this one here. And we have a folder path, which is this one. And for now, we just want to have the name of the file that's asking Power Apps and the file content is asking Power Apps. But we're going to do a bit of a trick here. So we will head over to the next action. So we're going to do the next action by actually going in and adding an action before the create file. So we needed this in order to actually have our file content appear, which is our image. But now we're going to add a compose action here like so. And what we actually want to do is use an expression. And what we want to do is this create file content, we want to convert that to a binary format. So this expression here, what it's doing is convert data URI to binary, so that's the format. We want to use the, the body which is in here is a trigger body that's what it's called if we look down below and the name of that is create oh, whoops uh, create file underscore file underscore contact uh, content okay we'll click OK there and that will actually do our conversion for us we're now going to use the update file properties to add some more information about the image which we would have just uploaded the site address is as before, and the SharePoint library name is as before as well. And the ID we want to use is this item ID here. And here we are now asked whether we want to put the title, the image ID, the picture type, etc. I'm actually going to specify them all in Power Apps. We're going to supply them in our connector. If you're trying this at home, and if these four didn't appear straight away, um, you have to basically click on this all documents, or use all columns, and if you close, collapse, and open up this again, um, you can see it's disappeared now. But as soon as I select all documents and then do that again, it appears. So it's just a, um, and now it's actually cleared my options, which is okay. Um, but I just wanted to point that out in case anyone else had a similar issue when trying this at home. Okay, so I just have to put these back in. And now we can save that. And our flow is complete. Let's head over to our Power App and actually attach the flow to the Power App now. So we have our save icon and what we'll do is we'll use Power Automate and we'll use this picture camera demo test. Now what it will do is it will take a few seconds there just to attach onto that icon. And once it's there, it's going to ask us for a few details when we run this flow. So we have the file name, the file content, so what's in the content, the title of the um, what goes into the picture library, the image ID, picture type, and the name text. Now the file content is the image itself. So we'll come back to that um, and we'll do that bit last. The title is going to be our text underscore text image. So we will use that. Okay, so we're just going to use a, a placeholder for our image, which we'll add back in. Um, sorry, that's the file name. So the first one is the file name. So we'll call that text image. The file content is the image itself, which we'll come back to. The title, so we'll use text image again for the title. The image ID, which we're going to use this box for, so text input one, 
course in real life you'd name these a lot better but for the purpose of this demo I'm just going to call it input text dot text and then the next bit is the picture type which is input text underscore one so it's highlighted there dot text and again the name text will call underscore text image as well now for the actual content which we said we'd come back to I'm going to use this formula here and we see there's an extra comma which is why that's done that and if we highlight this let's see what's happened okay and actually our um, our image here is uploaded image one so let's read this bit here so this is actually our content this is what gets taken by power apps so if take photo is true so if we've taken a photo which our variable told us we're going to use this captured image as is if we're going to use the uploaded image which is uploaded image 1.1 1 .1, as highlighted here we actually need to add in this JSON format to convert it into the correct format. So now this will handle, so this is the key bit here, this will handle whether we have a uploaded picture or a picture from camera. And now our formula is complete. Of course, once this is run, we do want to refresh our picture library because we want the new pictures to arrive and we also want to collect into our temp table the new data as well once it's been collected we now have our working flow that will do the entire use case that we've been discussing today I really hope you enjoyed that and do look out for my next video, which is going to show how to pull these images into Power BI. Thank you.